deliberately trying to stop Ben Quick from talking to Libby Rankin, aren't you? I'm going to have to hang a bell around your neck, Missy. Why are you doing that? He's been a bad boy, you know. He put a couple of shots through my front window last night. Whatever made you think that was my folly? There's been enough dredged up already, boy. This town ain't likely to change any opinions after 13 years. You'll be well advised to let things alone and forget it. How many times have I tried to forget it and you wouldn't let me? Oh, no. I'm gonna chop down a sacred idol. And I hope you're in the way when it falls. of a breeze gently stirs all the trees and a bird wants to please my ear the long hot summer oh so slowly moves Hot Summer, brought to you by Bristol Myers, makers of bufferin, faster, more effective than aspirin, without adding a lot of other drugs to your bloodstream. And by Crest Toothpaste, proved effective against cavities in test after test after test, over 12 years of tests. Crest. I'm just getting home. Yeah, you know I had to work late. Well, you could have called. Honey, I told you this morning I had to work late. Oh, that's right. Kids okay? Fine. I took them to the dentist. How'd they do? Well, Kathy only needed two fillings and Billy needed one. That's a lot better than the last time. Mm-hmm. Could be the crest. If your family uses crest and has fewer cavities, don't be surprised. Twelve years of tests prove Crest reduced cavities. In these tests, Crest reduced cavities 34%, 21%, 42%, all against the same toothpaste but without Floristan. Crest is accepted by the Council on Dental Therapeutics of the American Dental Association, as signified by this statement and this seal. So watch between meal treats, brush often, have regular checkups, and ask your dentist about Crest. day 13 years of the past are to be uncovered back to a time of intrigue and murder in Frenchman's Bend it will so entangle the lives of Ben Quick and Will Warner that they will finally have to face one another in a painful moment of truth welcome back from your trip Mr. Warner thanks Charlie how'd you find it the dozer scraped it out sure sorry we had to call you Mr. Warner but we didn't know whether to keep digging or not. What should we do, Mr. Varner? Call the sheriff. You better sit down. You look pale. All right, back to work. These contracts drawn up, just like we talked about, two copies. Oh, Minnie, you got a pen? Mm -hmm. And would you be so kind as to witness this signing? Sure, Ben, I'd be glad to. I furnish the cattle, you furnish the grave, is that it? That's it. And I get my 30%. You getting in over your head, Ben? Well, it hasn't been too long since you went in with Bo Chamberlain on that uh, lumber yard. A well, lumber yard deal won't be a pay-in proposition for quite a while. This cattle deal now is the thing I need to fill the gap. It's perfect. It won't take up any of my money, and it won't take up any of my time. Well, the president likes to give away souvenirs whenever he signs something. Don't see why this event isn't worth a souvenir, too. 
Oh, thank you. Oh, uh, after you, Ben. Okay. Only thing missing is a brass band. Well. <laughs> Mind if I join the occasion? <laughs> when did you get back? Just this morning, Minnie. A long trip. Oh, Glad well. it's over. But the workman's going to have to wait. Judging by your gentle expressions, I take it you have not heard the news. No, but I'm sure we're gonna. You may be asking to trade that coffee in for something stronger, Ben, quick. One of my cat tractors just dug up what's left of Dr. John Chambers Rankin out in the swamp. I'm sorry, Lucas. Seems there's a bullet hole in the skull. Now is it down considerable on how and why he disappeared? I'd say. How can they be sure it's Dr. John after 13 years? I asked the coroner that same question. They make identification nowadays with the man's bridge work, all scientific and foolproof. Gold don't rot. The board in his skull, all scientific and foolproof? Meaning? Is everybody sure my father killed him? Past 13 years, ever since Doc Rankin had that row with your daddy, it was assumed Lonnie Quick had something to do with the doctor's disappearance. This sort of... Nails it down, seems to me. Now we were signing something here, Lucas. Uh, I gotta think about this, Ben. Oh, you've been a good, helpful neighbor and all, but... Well, with this news about poor old Doc Rankin, where... Look, Lucas, this is a business deal between you and me, not my father. I know that, Ben. But right now, I gotta go over and see Doc Rankin's wife. She is my sister, you know. She needs me now. Well, maybe we, uh... Well, maybe later. good? This may come as a jolt and surprise, boy. But I got better things to do with my tractors than digging up bones. It's good for stirring up old dirt, too. Dirt's where you find it. You know something? I'm sick of living with the bad name you helped give me. I'm gonna find out exactly what happened if I had to kick in every door in this town. I'd take care about stubbing your toe if I was you, Mr. Quick. You got something to be thankful for, Mr. Varner. How's that? You're not me. Thanks for the coffee, Minnie. Bye, Ben. <laughs> Paul's got it all over his power for guts. You were pretty rough on him. Like a file on a hoe blade. Makes it sharper for cutting weeds. You don't really think Lonnie Quick killed Dr. John. I mean you, not the town. Asking questions with obvious answers already tagged on is a poor waste of a man's time. I'll try to remember that. Do you want something? Just a sweet and tender smile now and then. Many girl. You've got work to do. So do I. You've been a big help. Goodbye. Yeah. You ready to throw in the towel, yeah? No, I'm not ready to throw in the towel. <laughs> Boy, you're about as stubborn as army mule, you know that? That is the fifth one of Dr. Rankin's ex-patients. It's hung up on you. I'll call five more. I'll call ten more. At least I would if I had more names. Where'd you get the five? Dr. Clark gave them there. Just what you hope to find out, I certainly don't know about somebody who went to Doc Rankin 13 years ago with a busted finger or earache. Oh. A man was killed. Now, somebody hated that man. He had to be hated by somebody. Maybe my old man wasn't the only one. Now, there might be somebody in this town who knows that. How close were you to Doc Rankin? Not close enough to know if anybody hated him. But what did you know about him? Well, he... He paid prompt for work he hired. Always had a smile, kind word. Well, you agree with the rest of the town. He was a great man. I guess I do, Ben. 
even though I didn't know him very well. Odd jobs, mostly for him. Except that hunting lodge I built for him up at Jackson Meadow. That was a real nice place. Dr. John used to spend a lot of time up there. Well, I... I wish I could tell you more, Ben. I still say there could have been somebody besides my old man who hated him enough to kill him. Likely the only person that would know that much about Doc Rankin would be his missus. She's not going to let you talk to her. Why not? Well, she and that boy of hers have kept mighty close to the house since Doc disappeared. Hardly seen anybody. Not likely she'd see a... Go on, say it. Not likely she'd see a quick. Oh, Ben, Ben, I didn't mean any disrespect. You know that, but... Well, I just don't want to see you beating your brains out for nothing. Nothing? Oh, there have been two cancellations of lumber orders since they found that man's body. Old memories are beginning to stir. You got yourself a partner who's not setting so well with this town. That's something I aim to settle once and for all. I'll see you later. Quick, I'd like to see your mother. Quick. That's well, all right. It's a friendly visit. Sure, come in. I'll handle this, Paul. Hello, Ben. Lucas. I'm glad you're here. We can take care of a couple of things right away. Now, first of all, our business deal. I hope you've given some thought to it and reconsidered. I'm sorry, Ben, but we're not going to have a business deal together. With all this out in the open again, why? Makes my sister Libby a mighty miserable woman. I just can't do it to her. Couldn't go into business with her quick, is that it? Well, I hoped you'd understand. This is going to be settled once and for all. I want to see Mrs. Rankin. You got no business with my sister. Look, Lucas, my father's been tried and convicted by you and the rest of this town. I've got a right to ask for evidence. You take that up with a coroner. A bullet in someone's skull is no proof that Lonnie Quick pulled the trigger. Got proof he did? I'm looking for proof. Well, you find it someplace else except here. Now, you get some rest like you promised me you would. You will let me know if there's any words in the coroner's office? Oh, I will, Libby. All right, I'll rest. Would you ask Paulie to bring his mother a cup of tea? He'll be right up. to the bereaved? I just found out about it. I thought Mrs. Rankin would appreciate a visit. Lucas Tanny will roll out the red carpet for you. Just ring the doorbell. He's inside. What's wrong with you? Shouldn't be too hard to figure out. You blaming my papa because Lucas Tanny wouldn't sign the partnership agreement? That's part of my problem. Well, things will die down. Give it time. They won't die down while your daddy's ruling the roost. You accusing him of something? Yeah. Playing judge and jury. But I'm gonna knock him off that gold-plated pedestal of his. Well, if that's the way you feel, I'll ask you to excuse me. You're excused. You've been rushing all day now. You've got a headache. I'm Joan Fontaine. When the daily pressures of being a woman bring on headache pain, take Bufferin. More effective than simple aspirin without adding a lot of other drugs to your bloodstream. 
Simple aspirin tablets lose almost half their pure pain reliever before they ever get to work. Bufferin rushes almost twice as much of this pure pain reliever to your headache. Take Bufferin. I do. The closer he gets, the better you look. That's the beauty of new, nice and easy shampoo in hair color by Clairol. So rich it lightens lighter, brightens brighter, covers gray better. New, nice and easy by Clairol. So natural, the closer he gets, the better you look. What a lift for both of you. New, nice and easy shampoo in hair color by Clairol. <laughs> Conscientious servant of the people, huh? Now, don't you worry, Mr. Will. I'll see to it that nobody pesters Mrs. Rankin. You'll do that. Appreciate you dropping by. Anytime, Mr. Will. Anytime at all. Miss Clara? Sheriff? Papa, you're deliberately trying to stop Ben Quick from talking to Libby Rankin, aren't you? I'm going to have to hang a bell around your neck, Missy. Why are you doing that? Libby Rankin's a delicate woman, sensitive. Like a bone china curb, easy to break. And you're being protective. You don't remember, because you're only a wet bottom kid when Dr. John took those stairs out there two at a time to help save you from choking to death on a chicken bone. Well, I figure I owe him something for getting you to your present disrespectful age. I'm sorry, Papa. I wasn't trying to be disrespectful. Then you'll do well not to concern yourself with Libby Rankin. She's had her share of grief. I see no reason why she should suffer more because of another Quick. Another Quick? And you believe Lonnie Quick was guilty? Second time recently I've been asked that question. I don't intend to make a profession of answering it. Shot. Here's your rabbit. It's not mine. Well, sure it is. You hit him first. I just knocked him over. You can have him. Don't you like fried rabbit? I can't take him home. Mother doesn't know I'm hunting. Why? I sneak out in the afternoons when she's taking a nap. She doesn't like guns. Well, that's too bad. Well, I'll take the rabbit anyway. Thanks. Uh, Paul, I might just as well level with you. I saw you heading for the woods. I took a chance that maybe we could get to know each other better. Well, why? Uh, for a couple of reasons. It'd be nice to have someone to go hunting with sometimes. And I need your help. But you're a quick. Yeah, I'm a quick. You ever fired a 30 odd 6 No. This 22 belonged to my father. We keep it in the closet downstairs. That's how I can sneak it out. Want to try it? Sure. Just remember to keep it close up to your shoulder now, real snug. Don't be afraid of the kick. Get your elbow under. Now remember, squeeze the trigger real slow. How about that tin can over there? Yeah, fine. Squeeze it real slow. It's got a little more kick than the 22, huh? Thank you. Paul, am 
matter what you think or what you've been told, I'd like you to remember something. My name is Ben, not Lonnie. You know what I mean? Well, how can I help you? Just tell me how I can talk to your mother. You just want to talk. You, you won't hurt her or anything. Just talk, just talk. Well, uh, she stays in the vault most of the day. Uh, that's what I call the library. You'll see why if you go in there. Then you will help me. No. But the back door is open if... if anyone should decide to walk in without knocking. Thanks, Paul. And thanks for the rabbit, too. I'll see you around. chance that you'd see me. See you for what? Well, I'm looking for something, Mrs. Rankin. Something that uh, might have been said or done years ago that could prove what really happened to your husband. Of all the human beings that Dr. John helped her bring into this world, you have the least right to ask anything of me. Have the decency, if there is such a thing in your blood, is to leave this house. All I'm asking for is a few minutes, Mrs. Rankin. Please, please don't come into this room. My father and your husband were partners in a real estate venture they'd planned. All the details of the records are down in the courthouse. I know they sold shares to a lot of people here in town. They collected about $20,000. Now, who, uh, who was in charge of that money? Who kept it? I don't know. And what about that argument? They were supposed to have had uh, the one you talked about in the paper. Never said what that argument was about. All I know is it took place in this house. The same night... The same night John disappeared. Then you heard what was said? No. No, I didn't. Well, how'd you know it was an argument? Because they came into this room and they locked the doors. And I got so upset that I, I went for a walk. Why were you upset? Because your father was drunk. And he was trying to force my John to give him all the money he they had for the mill. Now you said you didn't know who kept the money. It's not important. Well, it's important to me. Your father stole the money that night. And then what? Did he just bury it and forget where he buried it? No, Mrs. Rank, and I grew up watching my father scratch dirt for a living. He was hiding the truth. I'm beginning to believe someone is. I don't have to listen to that. Every word I told you is the truth. Just ask Will. Will Varner. Was he here that night? No. You're lying. He was involved in it. Just how was he involved? I don't have to answer your evil questions. Get out of my house. Get out! Thank you very much, Mrs. Ragan. Very
Carbona. Long Hot Summer will continue following station identification. Hi, Ben. Hi, Minnie. You know, Pearson's got the best lemons in town. Minnie, can I talk to you for a minute? Sure. Uh, Harry, you want to take these lemons in the kitchen and cut them up? I'll take care of the bar. I came in to apologize for what happened yesterday. Oh, that's all right. Maybe you had a right to get angry. All the same, I apologize. Apologies accepted. You want another beer? No, thanks. I've been sitting here feeling sorry for myself long enough. Let two days' work pile up on me. Well, you must have had a pretty good reason. I've got to back up what I told Varner. And you spent two good work days nosing around getting nowhere. Word gets around. <laughs> Very fast. I don't know, Minnie, there's something wrong. Every time I ask questions about Dr. Rankin, I get either blank stares or just lies. Anybody in particular? Mrs. Rankin, for one. Mrs. Rankin? You talk to her? Yeah. I never had an opportunity to get to know her. I do see her boy around town every now and then. Well, she stays locked in her vault. Her what? That's what her son calls their library. She's made a shrine of it. Well, that must be a pretty gloomy place to live in. Not if you like saints. He was very well liked in this town, Ben. Minnie, you know anything about a hunting lodge he built? Not that I remember. Well, Bo Chamberlain built it for him. About 75 miles upstate of here. A place called Jackson Meadows. He spent a lot of time up there. Well, what's so unusual about that? Who doesn't like to get away from work every now and then? He spent a lot of time up there. Now, Ben, now that I think about it, Dr. John was considered one of the best hunters in this county. Now, that much I do remember. Then why would he build a hunting lodge in Jackson Meadows? There's nothing to hunt up there. Never was. Ben, the advice is still free. You're all fired up about something that just isn't there. Now, it's one thing to take a kick at Will Varner. He's big enough to hit back. But don't try it with Dr. John. Because you're right about one thing. In this town, he's almost a saint. The B stands for Bell. Oh, well, uh, I understand this was Dr. Rankin's place at one time. Oh, what about it? Well, I was just curious. I was driving by. My name is Ben Quick. I uh, wanted to talk to you. Can I come in? Why not? Sure. Just come in and make yourself right at home. Want to sit down there? Thank you. Now, uh, now, you must have something more than just curiosity about this house on your mind. Right, Mr. Quick? You've heard the name before. <laughs> well, it's the most talked about for a hundred miles. Yeah, I guess I have. And you knew my father. Well, I, uh, I, I did hear John mention him on occasion. You say, John, you must have been very close friends with Dr. Rankin. Can you tell me something about him? About what happened? He was killed, that's all. Somebody shot him and threw his body in a swamp. Do you think my father did it? What if I said no? 
I'd want to know why. Oh, look, I don't know anything. I, I live here alone, I think alone, and I mind my own business alone. Well, you've got a nice place here. Yeah? I understand Dr. Rankin built this place as a... a hunting lodge. Yeah. <laughs> nice picture of him. I like it. Must be a photographic copy. I saw the original yesterday. Well, now tell me, how, uh, how is Mrs. Rankin these days, huh? She seems well. She's devoted to her son. Her son? Well, how nice. You know, I remember little Paul. He was a, a dear, sweet little child of his father. Must have been awfully lonely here. Just a picture to keep you company. Now you listen to me. Maybe she did have the house and the kid. But I was the real Mrs. Rankin. This is where he came when he wanted companionship, not to her. This is where he came when he, when he wanted to be cheered up if he was sad. Or sobered up if he was drunk. This is where. Don't you forget that, Mr. Quick! Oh, boy, she, she's got everybody in town feeling sorry for, hasn't she? Not everybody. Oh, sure, the poor little widow woman. And her poor little orphan kid. Listen, I've seen the way Will Varner and all them other big shots in town, they fall all over themselves acting so sad and sorrowful about poor Mrs. Rankin. <laughs> you sound like you're not too fond of Will Varner. Why should I be? Listen, that night John came out here with his clothes all bloody and his face all cut up and swollen. You didn't know about that, did you? About what? About Varner and John. They got each other like a couple of animals in an alley. Oh, they, they hated each other. Hey, you know something? I'm the only one left alive who knows anything about that. Except Will Varner. You don't think Lonnie Quick killed him, do you? No. Well, neither do I. interesting visit with Libby Rankin. You think this comes as a surprise to me, boy? I knew about it before you snuck out. You did sneak out like you snuck in, didn't you? Mrs. Rankin is a very nervous woman. She gets flustered easy. She mentioned something to me about your being at the Rankin house the night the doctor disappeared. That ain't exactly an overwhelming piece of news, is it? No, maybe not. But it got me to thinking about a few things, like Belle Sutton and that fight you and Rankin had that nobody knows about, how you hated each other. Your mind gets cluttered up with a lot of things that ain't none of your business. Why did you and Rankin fight? And why have you kept it quiet all these years? If you've got something to say, say it. I think you killed Rankin, and I'm going to prove it. Enjoy your dinner. <laughs>
How you doing in your target practice? Ben, where'd you come from? Well, I've been out here looking for my knife. I lost it out here yesterday. I tell you, I wouldn't know what to do without this. I use it for skinning rabbits, cutting string, even uh, prying bullets out of my woodwork. As a matter of fact, I didn't get much sleep last night. It's too much noise. Someone put some shots through my front window. Want to see the bullet? Sure. Yeah, one of them, man. Yeah. yeah. That looks like a 22. Yeah, just like your gun uses. Did you see who it was? No, he got away too fast. Well, who want to take shots at you? I don't know. You have any ideas? No, I can't think of anyone. Uncle Lucas doesn't like you much, but he wouldn't do anything. No, probably not. Besides, he was sick last night. Mother had to get up and go see about him. Your mother went out of the house? Yeah. Well, that's unusual, isn't it? Yeah, she doesn't like to go out much at all, especially at night. Did your uh, Uncle Lucas call your mother? I don't know, I, I guess he did. Hey, why don't we go hunting or something? Maybe we can uh, think of a couple of good suspects. No, I can't right now. But I'll tell you what. Real soon, we'll get together. Go out to my place where there's some good hunting. That'd be fun. Well, keep up the practice. See you later. Pick up your interest any share? Why should it? Because somebody's mighty sure that I'm getting too close to the truth. That's your story. For all I know, you could have popped those bullets into your house yourself. Just to sway feelings in your direction. Libby Rankin could have done it. Now look, Ben, we've been all over this before. I'm not gonna stand around here unless you drag the Rankin name through the mud. I'm again. not dragging anybody's name through the mud. I'm trying to get to the bottom of this. How? By accusing Libby Rankin of attempted murder? Look, boy, she has no reason to want you out of the way. Will Varner has. Maybe he put her up to it. Will Varner? <laughs> hey, boy, you are the howling end. <laughs> I had a long talk with Belle Sutton yesterday, Sheriff. Seems she and Doc Rankin were long-time friends. Well, look at that. You lost your smile. What about Belle Sutton? She had a lot to say about a big fight Barner had with Rankin. Seems they weren't as friendly as people were made to believe. Are you trying to say Will Varner had something to do with Dr. John's death? Sheriff, I plan to take this thing one step at a time, beginning with Libby Rankin. Now, if you're so sure she didn't fire those shots at me, why don't you prove it? Make a ballistics test on these bullets, check it against her rifle. Well, if you think that I'm going down there and just the same as accuse that woman, you got another thing coming. Yeah, you're right, Sheriff. Foolish of me to expect you to deal out any unprejudiced law and order for a change. Well, now that breaks it. Ben Quick, I've had enough for you to last me till winter. You better get out of here, because my patience is wearing paper thin. It's your office. Should be interesting to see what kind of treatment I get in Jefferson when I go over your head. Harv Anders. Let me speak to your daddy, huh? Will Varner arrives in a cloud of dust. Let you and me don't waste each other's time. We got some talking to do. You got me between a rock and a hard place, boy. Think. That's not exactly the right word. Before you start pinning any medals on your chest, better take a look at these. Building material contracts. That's right. 
Now look at the signature on the bottom. John Rankin. Every one of them. His name's on the line of seller. Give you any ideas? Yeah. He had a lot of sidelines. Crooked sidelines, all of them. Cement that crumbled with too much sand. Walls that buckled with half-rotten lumber. Now what you're saying is he wasn't a great man after all. He was a thief and a liar. You don't remember that school over in Clayton County collapsed one day, sending 34 children to the hospital. But thanks be, no one was killed. Well, I helped Frank and get the materials contract for that job because he said he needed the money. And then you had a twinge of conscience and you dealt out a little justice. You young fool. I didn't kill Rankin. I fought him with bare knuckles and broken bottles after I found out what kind of scum he really was. And why'd you keep it so quiet? Why'd you let the rest of the town know about it? I planned it. You can bet on that. But Rankin disappeared. And I didn't see any use in making Livy and the kids suffer. You ought to know about that boy when you have to pay for your daddy's guilt. If my father killed that man. From what you say, he did the town a service. Maybe he did. But that still don't excuse murder. You were at the Rankin house that night. Did you see my father? I came out there to tell Rankin how much I was going to enjoy breaking him in too if he didn't pack up and get out of Frenchman's Bend. I didn't exactly hold the conversation under the front porch light. Then you didn't see my father, you didn't talk to him or anything else? He came after I left. How do you know that? Because Libby told me. Oh. Your daddy heard that Rankin stole the money they were going to use for the real estate development, and he came looking for him with blood in his eye. Man, he wouldn't give it back to him, so my daddy just killed him. Is that it? That makes an interesting conclusion. Libby Rankin sure gets around, doesn't she? Always around when something bad happens, especially if it happens to her quick. Maybe you can give me a good reason why she pumped two of these through my front window last night. I'll ask you the same question, boy. How do you know? I plan to prove it. The ballistics test from Jefferson. These slugs came from a 22 caliber rifle. The Rankins happened to own a 22 caliber rifle. I'm not responsible for anything that Libby Rankin does. Funny you should be so concerned about her welfare. There's been enough dredged up already, boy. This town ain't likely to change any opinions after 13 years. You'll be well advised to let things alone and forget it. How many times have I tried to forget it and you wouldn't let me? Oh, no. I'm gonna chop down a sacred idol. And I hope you're in the way when it falls. And you know, Dr. Rankin never sent a bill. If a patient couldn't pay, Dr. John always understood. Mrs. Rankin, this is not a social call. Polly idolizes his father. Of course, I think that's only right. I think a boy should have someone to look up to and respect. Mrs. Rankin. He's often mentioned your name, Mr. Quick. I'm sure he'll be very disappointed that he wasn't here. Oh, well, maybe he won't. He's been a bad boy. He put a couple of shots through my front window last night. Well, whatever made you think that was my Paulie? Eh? Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was you. You're not going to tell anyone, are you? I'm not going to overlook it. But you mustn't. You mustn't ask questions about the past. Dr. John was loved and respected in this community, and that's very important for Paulie. Well, it's important to me that my father's name is at least tolerated. But I can't help you. I think you can. Or should I ask Belle Sutton? I have no idea who you're talking about. Well, then you won't mind if Belle Sutton has to take the witness stand and testify about her close friendship with your husband. Stop it! No. Don't ever mention that name in this house. He was going to run away with her. He was going to take the money and desert us. 
his own wife and child. I had to kill him. I'm sure, I'm sure they'll understand once they know why. We'll have to go to the sheriff's office. You're the only one who can prove my father's innocence. Yeah, but what about Polly? I'm sorry. But think what a scandal would do to him. All right, I'll get my coat. You had your medal. Mrs. Riken, put it down. No one would have known but me. Please? I've protected Polly. I've given him a home. I've given him someone to respect. That's not so evil, is it? Don't make it worse for yourself, Mrs. Riken. Just give me the rifle. I shot him and I, I dragged him to the swamp and burned all the money. There wasn't a trace of it left. So you see why I had to do it, don't you? Please, give me the rifle. No one knows but me. They'll understand. They'll help you. Now give me the rifle. Please. No! Please. cat foods from Little Friskies and your favorite flavors. Country chicken, savory, braised liver, hearty flavor. Where's original ocean fish? Glad you asked. See, all three of your favorite flavors. Uh, hold it, fellas. You'll have to ask the lady who feeds you. She'll like serving them right from the box. No liquid to add. Why don't you ask her to buy all three flavors? You country chicken, you braised liver, original ocean fish, they're exclusive in Little Frisky's dry cat foods. I knew you couldn't wait. Nothing tops off a good meal like coffee. Nothing brings out the best in coffee flavor like Coffee Mate, non-dairy coffee creamer. Quick, easy, needs no refrigeration. Coffee Mate, the coffee creamer for people who like great coffee flavor. Try it. Why did she shoot you, Ben? Just an accident. 
Is that all? Yeah, that's all. What now? Um, Uncle Lucas wants me to go and stay with him for a while, and then I guess I'll go away to school somewhere. I'd still like to go hunting with you sometime, Ben. Sure, anytime you want. Well, let's go, Paul. Take good care of him. Hey, boy! As long as you're cleaning up around here, put this in the trash. Buy yourself a new piece of property? Already in escrow. Judging by the way you're hopping on that leg, I'd say you got off lucky. Libby Rankin told me she murdered her husband. That's why she's running away. I'd expect you to come up with some story like that, now that she ain't here to deny it. It won't be that easy, quick. Well, that's where you're wrong. It's gonna be real easy for me from now on. Because I know the truth. You're not so sure anymore. Quick may turn out to be a proud name in this town, after all. Oh, you might have a long spell to wait, boy. I'm used to waiting. And I've got time. Make sure you clean up good around here. I'll do that, old man. You go home and rest your weary bones. Now, scenes from the next episode of The Long Hot Summer. Papa thinks that you and Eula are up to something. And Jody's in a tizzy about it. They won't even let him talk to her on the telephone. Well, the main reason she's staying there is to learn how to act when she's invited to your house. Not that she ever will be. You can't leave now. How did she die? It's truly a miracle. First Colette, and now you. non-dairy coffee creamer from Carnation that lets the true coffee flavor come through. So naturally, you'll love it in your coffee. The place where you worship can change things in your community, the nation, the whole world. Worship this week and put your faith to work all week long.